everybody! Today we are going to be starting a new topic in our lunar lessons, which is called Lost and Found. Our learning objective is to identify the South Pole and learn about this area of the world. Last Monday, we met a little boy called Tom, who was using lots of different equipment like these things on your screen. He was using a windsock, a measuring cylinder, some beakers and a thermometer. But can you remember what he was using these things to measure? Well done guys, he was using these things to measure the weather. So the windsock would measure how strong the wind is and in which direction it is travelling on that day. The beakers and the measure measuring cylinder would be used to measure the amount of rainfall and to collect the rain in the beaker. And the thermometer is used to measure how hot or cold the air is on a given day. Once we worked out that Tom was measuring the weather, we started to think about recording the weather ourselves using our record sheet, our weather diary. Now, I'd like you to go back to your weather diary, which you started to fill in last week, and complete the next row in your diary, so the next row on our table, to say what the weather is like today. Now, I've attached the sheet in Teams again, just in case anyone else needs it at home. Um, so all we need to do is fill in today's date, and then we need to tick the box if it's raining, tick the box if it's windy, if it's cloudy, if it's sunshine, or if it's anything other. Our topic this half term is called Lost and Found, and it's based on the story that is written by Oliver Jeffers called Lost and Found. There is a link attached to the announcement in the Lunar Channel, on the Lunar Channel, for you to watch a recording of this story, okay? So if you click the link, it will take you to a recording of Lost and Found so you can listen to the story and see some of the lovely pictures that are inside it. Now that we've read the story, it's time to have a little think about it. So why do we think the penguin looks really sad? Have a look at the picture of the penguin on our screen. Well, he might be sad because he's far away from his home and he's not got any of his family with him. So he's had to befriend the boy in the story to keep him company and hope that the boy can get him back to um, where he belongs, where his family is. OK, so why do we think the boy asks the birds and his ducks how to help the penguin? Well, he might be looking for a little bit of advice. He might be looking and hoping that they have an idea of how to get the penguin home. But, does anyone know what type of animal a penguin is? It's a bird, isn't it? A penguin, it's a type of bird. And so are ducks and birds. So maybe he's asked these animals because they're similar to a penguin because they're all birds. So the birds and the ducks might understand how to help the penguin and what the penguin's needs are. So thinking about our penguins in general now, where the penguins normally live, have a little look at the picture that's on your screen. Have a little think about where you would normally find a penguin. Well, on the picture it looks like it's very snowy and very icy and there's lots of open water for the penguins to have a little swim in and it looks like it's very, very cold. Would we then expect to find a penguin in the wild in the UK? So the wild means if we were walking down the street and we saw a penguin, would this be normal? Would we expect to see a penguin in the wild? We wouldn't, would we? We'd expect to find a penguin in a zoo where they are cared for by people all the time and their environment is suited to them. But we wouldn't expect to find them in the wild in the UK. And that's because our country just isn't cold enough for a penguin to live in. We don't have lots of icy and snowy places or lots of open water for the penguins to swim in, like we can see in our picture. Our country also has lots of built-up cities with buildings and busy roads. But on our picture, we can't see anything like that. So our country isn't suitable for a penguin. In the story, it tells us that penguins come from the South Pole. Now, in our lunar topic this half term, we're going to help the penguin to get home by travelling all around the world to get to the South Pole. 
The South Pole is right at the bottom of our globe, which is where our red arrow is pointing to on the globe on your screen now. Why do we think this place is called the South Pole? Well, have a little think about your points on a compass. We've got North, East, South and West. And South is down at the bottom, isn't it? So this point on our globe is the furthest you can travel downwards. It's the most suddenly point in our, on, our, on our Earth. This picture is taken from Google Earth, which we had lots of fun playing on last half term when we were studying the UK. The land in the South Pole is called Antarctica. Can you say Antarctica? Antarctica. Antarctica is a country just like the UK. We're going to have a little explore and find out what it is like in Antarctica. The reason why we need to understand what Antarctica is like is so that we can help our penguin to feel comfortable on his journey back to his home, Antarctica. So the first thing we're going to look at is the Antarctic landscape. A landscape is what a piece of land looks like. So have a look at the pictures on your screen now. What does the landscape in Antarctica look like? And can you think of any adjectives to describe it? The adjectives that I can think of to describe Antarctica are things like icy, snowy and cold. Did you think of any more? It's not very easy to build in Antarctica. Not only is it very, very snowy, but there are no trees, so they can't build anything out of wood. There are no houses in Antarctica because nobody lives there permanently. No one lives there all the time, every single year, all through the year, because it's far too cold. People travel there to research and live in their research stations, which you can see on your screen now. Transport is all about the movement of people from one place to another. How do you think people would travel or move in Antarctica? So if there was lots and lots of snow all over the ground, what would be the best way of moving around this space? You can use the pictures to help you on the screen. So people might travel by boat because there's lots and lots of water in Antarctica. As long as it's not too icy, the boat should be able to move through the water quite smoothly. People could also travel by helicopter because this will help them to get across the snow without ha actually having to go on the snow and potentially get stuck. Or they could go in what looks like a tractor because these wheels would help the um, person to get across the snow quite easily without them getting stuck. Now we're going to have a little think about the weather and the climate in Antarctica. Now, as Antarctica is so far south, during the summer months, it is always daytime and never nighttime. What do you think the weather is like in Antarctica? Use the picture to help you. I want you to pause the video and have a little think about the weather in this part of our world. So looking at the picture, it looks very snowy and very, very icy. There might be lots of snowstorms in Antarctica. Do you think it rains here? Yes or no? What do we think? Now this might surprise you, but Antarct in Antarctica it never rains. So technically that makes Antarctica a desert. And that's strange because usually when we think of deserts, we think of sandy places, not snowy places. But because it never ever rains in Antarctica, this place on our Earth is a desert. How cold do you think it is here? It looks really, really cold, doesn't it? Now, inland, it can be up to minus 55 degrees. But on the coast, near the water, it can be minus 10. So there's such a big difference in the temperature on this, on this, um, in this country. But it is absolutely freezing cold there. So if we're going, we need to wrap up really, really warm if we want to go to Antarctica. Now we've already started to think about the animals in Antarctica, but we're going to think about other animals as well as our penguins. 
There is lots and lots of wildlife in Antarctica because it's rarely ever visited by any people. Do you think you can name some of the animals that are on the pictures on your screen? So we've got our killer whales, we've got our penguins and we've got some sea lions. There are three types of penguins in Antarctica. There's the emperor penguin, the adelie penguin and the macaroni penguin. Today we are going to pack a suitcase to travel to Antarctica. What do you think we are going to need to travel there? Let's have a little think. What do you think we might need? So if I was going to maybe do some research and have a little look at the wildlife and the penguins, I might take some binoculars. I might take a camera to take some pictures of the different animals. And to make sure that I'm really, really warm, I might need to take my hat and scarf and gloves and a big warm coat. So in my suitcase, I might draw those things. We only need to pick five, but I'm going to draw those things into my suitcase. Then I'm going to do the fact file. I'd like you to have a little go at the fact file too. There are four questions that we'd like you to answer using the facts from this video that we've just watched. And remember to try and write in full sentences. So we need to include our capital letters, our finger spaces and our full stops. Don't forget to send your work over to us on the chat boxes.